maybe you know these worms that are flat worms which live all around the world um, in terrestrial habitats as well as in water, fresh water and salt water. And here we have one of them. It is the species uh, Dugesia tigrina. And we can see here the head part with the pigment cups um, as eyes and the auricles as ears or the sensory organs better. Um, and there is the abdomen with the pharynx for food input and waste output. And maybe you know the planarians have one very remarkable ability. When you take one of these worms and cut him or it him into pieces, two pieces, or in five pieces, or maybe in hundred pieces, every piece will regrow to a whole new flat worm. And this ability um, makes the planarians to create their own genome over and over again. So no one will never know how old is the oldest planarian. And now understanding this uh, differentiation processes and regeneration process is a, a basic problem of medical and of the um, of the basic science and due to uh, Techniques like, for example, single cell transcriptomics, a lot of the uh, me mechanisms are understood, and a lot of the cell stages are uh, identified, but this often provides only a snapshot of the whole cell dynamics story. And therefore, um, our research was the uh, um, goals of our research are this year. At first, we uh, describe the transcriptome of uh, the worm, and then we calculated the uh, cell state trajectories, and we uh, designed an approach to calculate gene state tra tra trajectories. And after this, we applied it to human data, and then we uh, call, uh, we we could uh, describe pseudo dynamics of organ and organ development and cancer development or cancer progression. Um, at first, we take the data of a previously published study study from uh, Maria Plus and her colleagues and they did highly parallel single cell transcriptomic profiling of nearly 22,000 cells and for this they take one uh, planarian, the species Schmuthea mediterranea and cut it into pieces, five or seven I think, and then they sequence the pieces immediately or in two days or five days after the cutting. And so they get this uh, big data set. This is a TSNE representation of the whole planarian data set. And the clusters are colored according to the expression of previously published marker genes. And here we have in the middle a big stem cell cluster and around them the other clusters. Here is the muscle tissue cluster in red, the neurons in orange, the secretory cells in purple. Here are the epidermal lineage in blue. Uh, the protonephridia are this small cluster here. The gut uh, cells in green and the uh, parajumal cells in magenta uh, or magenta, I think. Yes, and here we see in the periphery there are the um, 
differentiated cells, and in between there are the progenitors. And we take this data set and put it into the ORT program. ORT is a method to reconstruct uh, transcriptional trajectories and it is uh, named after the Norse mythological figure. And the approach goes like this. Here in the first step, the uh, transition probabilities are computed, then uh, the pseudotime from user-defined root to uh, every cell is computed, then the, um, the uh, trajectories are calculated from the root to the uh, developmental endpoints, endpoints named tips, and after this they were joined agglomeratively and then there is a nice visualization step. Uh, make a long story short, here are the results. Um, this is a 3D representation of the data, a branching tree, and you can see that all the, the major fates are rooted on one single stem cell cluster. And now you get a good overview and in original you can uh, spin it around and look from every side like, I'm sorry, like here from the left and from the right and from above. And in the next step, we put this data into our uh, single cell R analysis tools machinery called SPREAD, and it is a kind of opossum for single cell data. And it is uh, designed by Henry. Um, and he gives a short introduction uh, yesterday. Um, this, this program transforms the whole uh, planarian transcriptome into one expression portrait per sample. Here we have selected expression portraits of the planarian transcriptome, uh, mean-wise, group-wise expression portraits pinned on our nice tree. And for example, here is, uh, here is the expression portrait for the neoplasts. Um, Henry said yesterday that every tile of this uh, portraits refer to one of the thousand meter genes, which uh, are containers for genes with similar expression profiles. And the color gradient goes from red as overexpression to blue as underexpression. And here you can see the stem cells have this red overexpression spot in the uh, right upper corner, for example, specifically, and the muscle tissue, muscle body cells have this um, spot in the bottom left area, and the epidermal cells have the spot there, and then we can have a look on the progenitor cells, and it's interesting that they have this uh, combinations of spot patterns. Here are the uh, uh, spots were also in the in the neoplasts and then there are all the differentiated spots here of the epidermal lineage and there of the muscle tissue lineage. Um, now to get an uh, overview about uh, um, global media gene expression we uh, produced oh, sorry Um, this uh, spot summary map. This is a map of co-expressed genes with uh, named with capital letters, and they are uh, co uh, They are clustered by the heatmap algorithm. And here we have the spot profile heatmap. This uh, heatmap shows the mean meta gene expression of every spot for every sample. And now we can go and have a look on the spots. For example, here this E spot. 
and we see it is uh, mainly upregulated in the neoplasts and a little bit in the epidermal cells and also a little bit in the gut progenitors. Um, and then we have done gene set enrichment analysis based on the GO terms. And here we have our gene set uh, enrichment analysis heat map. And there we see the set scores in every line for every gene set and for every uh, sample cluster horizontally and vertical. And we see a huge upregulated cluster of mainly stem cells and progenitor cells. And these upregulated uh, signatures are translational elongation and termination, co translational protein targeting, protein targeting, and so on. Uh, meaning, these are all, uh, all signatures which were associated with a high cell turnover. And here we have our uh, gene set profile and our gene set map. And again, we see the high expression in stem cells. And uh, here we see the accumulation of gene sets in the area of spot E. And then we can do this for the other spots, like for example, spot B. And here we see a high expression in the epidermal cells and also in the um, spot profile. And now we can also have a look on gene set enrichment analysis. And here we see a lot of terms associated with uh, actin and actin and cytoskeletal things and so on. And this is interesting because when a planarian gets injured, the wound will be firstly uh, spread with uh, old differentiated cells until the newly freshly differentiated ones are available after one week. And in this time they uh, pr produce such, uh, such kind of uh, stress fibers with overexpression in signatures like actin and cytoskeletal things. And again we have here the spot profile maps, uh, the spot profile maps, yes, and the um, map of the accumulation of the gene sets. And the same for the other spots. Um, spot A is upregulated in parenchyma cells and spot G is upregulated in glia, <coughs> glia and pigment cells. Yes. Uh, so far so good. Now we uh, our goal was to visualize this differentiation process. Um, we see here with the spot combinations from, for example, uh, the spot, the, the stem cell spot to this uh, two spot pattern to this uh, differentiated spot pattern. Uh, our goal was to visualize this uh, in one map by reconstructing the gene state trajectories. And therefore, uh, we, uh, we have designed this nice little opossum add-on. And the, the approach goes like this. At first, it takes one lineage of the sample. Then it adds the transformed uh, expression portrait data. And after this, it goes from the start point in direction uh, of maxima expression along the Cummins clusters to the um, stop point, stop cluster. It sounds a little bit complicated, but uh, the result is this year. Um, here we have one map with uh, the trajectories for every phase. And we can see, uh, uh, firstly, they are joined, and then they spread here, the epidermal lineage, and then 
here is the chart, and so on. And now we can have a look on the consecutively activated uh, groups of genes in the clusters. Uh, for example, here we have the epidermal lineage with, in the beginning, there are the stem cells upregulated, and then along the line, at the end, there are the um, epidermal samples, uh, there are the genes upregulated, and here is the muscular part, and again we see the same, the same consecutively activation of the um, genes along the line. And after this, we uh, take this uh, opossum at one and run it on other data, on human data. Uh, Lydia um, yesterday gave an introduction into this data set. This are um, expression data of prefrontal human cortex samples um, from newborn over baby and infant to teenager, adult and late adult. <coughs> this were again the transformed expression portraits. And here we can nicely see that at first um, the newborns had very high activation in this cluster and along the line it goes over to activation in baby and infant, teenager, late adult and adult. So this is a kind of aging trajectory. And the same for the metulone data. Lydia analyzed mainly. And here we have again our expression um, our expression maps. And here we see the high activation in prenatals and then along the line it goes uh, to the late adults. And this is, uh, again, some, some a reconstruction of the, of the uh, um, transcriptomal aging lineage. And here for uh, the glioma data Lydia analyzed, it is a short trajectory of tumor progression going from high expression in a mainly health uh, samples with mainly healthy brain characteristics to samples uh, with mostly higher WHO grade and very poor prognosis. And here we see the activation goes from there and along the line, which is to the high activation in the um, people with the poor prognosis. And so we can say that we have described uh, the transcriptome of um, the planarian, we described the pseudodynamics and the tissue development and differentiation, and uh, we calculated the um, cell state trajectories in this nice, in this nice tree. Then we uh, designed a, a, a possum add-on for calculation of the uh, gene state trajectories. And in the last step, we applied this on the uh, human data to, to better understand uh, processes, dynamic processes, like, for example, organ development or cancer progression. So, that's it.